All right, welcome to the pod presented by Prime Video. It was uh, four days, I guess six, because we were watching and laughing at Virginia and stuff. <laughs> uh, but four days of uh, March Madness, and it lived up to it. Favorites move on. First time in a while that we've had uh, all the ones and two seeds made it. I really thought, like, about the two to three seed, it wouldn't matter between that and, like, 12 or 14. Didn't really pan out, but uh, so committee, plenty of reasons to bash them. They did a pretty good job seeding the top teams. A lot of impressive performances, but a lot of good upsets, crazy shots, buzzer beaters, unexpected results, uh, humiliating defeats, all the things we want. Crying band members, (laughs) absurdities. Uh, folk heroes. I heard that Yale was too cheap to bring their band to Spokane. They they got the University of Idaho to be their band. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look, Ma, I got into Yale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're yeah you're a general studies dude at Idaho, but you're repping Yale for the weekend. Like, I was go. in that. I was in the Yale band. Yeah. And they go, would you went to Yale? Well, riddle me this. How would I not have gone if I'm in the band? <laughs> You're hired. A lot of stuff happened. Oh, a lot. Let's start with this bonkers game. We'll kind of just go through winners, some winners and some losers here. We'll keep it, keep it casual. But this uh, Houston, Texas A&M game that ended the, the weekend smorgasbord on Sunday night was uh, as crazy as they get. Great game, in-state rivalry game. I'm sure they got huge ratings in the state of Texas. Um, Houston, always solid all year. Gives up an 11-point. Really, they didn't give it up. A&M just rallied. A&M got it done. Final two minutes to force overtime and foul all of the Houston Cougars out of the game, basically, including the amazing Jamal Shedd. The Aggies, uh, Anderson Garcia hits a three at the buzzer. That isn't his thing. Uh, and then we end up with a uh, a walk-on for Houston named Ryan Elvin, who hadn't played. Had played like, I don't know, like 20 minutes the whole year. He was three for four from the free throw line for the season. And he has to hit one <laughs> to stay by, <laughs> with the Sweet 16 on the line. And he gets one of two and gets it done. Um, one of the more bonker games I've ever seen. Pat, your thoughts on that one or anything else you you got, but that one and, and the and the Houston Cougars moving on. Yeah, that was like that was beyond belief on so many different levels. For one, like I could not believe Houston of all teams coughed that thing up because they are so solid. Uh but yes, to AM's credit, AM did a great job taking it and making them cough it up. If you got if A and M could make some free throws, they would have won the game. But A and M got five shots on the last possession. They got it down to a point where it was a three point game. Somehow, I don't know how, but they did. And miss, get a rebound, miss, out of bounds or jump ball, get the ball back, miss, get a rebound, miss, possession to A and M, and then the the out of bounds play for the tying shot. Tyrese Radford inbounded the ball and basically threw a sinker pitch, kind of like a sidearm sinker inbounds pass. It bounced one time at knee level. Andrew Sargent Garcia grabs it with the second left, picks it up, shoots it, falls down, and is on his back at the time that he ties the game. And at that point, four of Houston starters had fouled out, including Jamal Shedd, who is the everything for them, but also LJ Cryer. Shedd was still there for a while of the... The, oh, that's, no, team. you're right. You're right. You're right. Shed did not foul out till overtime. You're yeah. right. You're right. But anyway, they like you're going into overtime right there. As you're Houston. You are in complete shock. You cannot believe you have given this up. And you've got three of your guys have fouled out. And they somehow rallied uh, in OT to, to win the game. And that Shed just put him on his back and said, look, I clear it. I'll go one on one on however many I need to go on. And probably... They should have run more defenders at him, but he made shots. He passed the guys for shots. Uh, just a superhuman performance. And again, yes, yeah, so Ryan Elvin, uh, basically he's he's like the guy that gets in for two minutes at the end of blowouts. 
Uh, he's a senior. He's a walk-on. He's never done really much of anything. He's a bull crawfish, lady. apparently. <laughs> what? Apparently, bull crawfish. There's a apparently the first Google search image search that comes up of uh, one of the first ones that comes up is him uh, standing over a boiling pot of crawfish with a massive <laughs> paddle in it. That's my guy right there. Okay. Well. <laughs> That man. and ca- a career high nine points against Our Lady of the Lake in 2021. Um, no, he's done nothing. He steps up there like I can't imagine what he's feeling with your number one seed, all of everything that's on the line, and he misses the first one. He has to make the second one, basically, and he did. Just a wild, epic game. What was the score when he like? What, what was the situation? Because remember, uh, as I told you guys off air, when A uh, and L or when Houston was leading by ten with two minutes left, I uh, dozed off. Uh, so I missed the whole, yeah, all of <laughs> this. Missed the exciting fireworks. part. Missed it the was a three so what, point game. Yeah, it was okay. a three point yeah. game. So mm-hmm. he kind of needed to ice it, but yeah. I mean, it yeah. was just Shed was out. Uh, right. The other three, like right. they, they had no ball handlers. They had no yeah. ball handlers left yeah. in the game. They did not know how to pass the ball in. They throw it there <laughs> to him, and they get it. And it's like if A and M can get this to overtime, they're going to win by like twelve. Yeah, like it, it, Houston is cooked. They got nothing. And I, one other thing, end of regulation. It was a they, they called a jump ball, mm. Uh, mm. or a, or a whatever possession error, uh, whatever they call it. Uh, First, yeah. I hate the possession arrow. Um, yeah. Cue my Dickie V screaming about the possession arrow. He's been screaming about it for 40 years, but they're not changing it. Um, the possession arrow, if, if they don't call the first of it was a quick possession arrow. I didn't think it was a, a tie up at all. I thought it was Houston ball. But right. by calling it a possession arrow, they stopped the clock. The rest stopped the clock for Houston to be able to run the play. Mm. If they had just let the continuation go, there's no way Houston gets a shot off. Right. So yeah. the ref call on that was literally now that kid made incredible pass, incredible shot, mm-hmm. whatever. It all went out, but there were many bad calls this weekend. <laughs> um, but that one was uh, that was it was what a I mean that was just insane. That was just an insane yeah. game. Yeah, and that's one thing we you know we've had a lot of excitement, obviously, but to have a true bu- I think that was the first true buzzer beater of the tournament was Anderson Garcia's shot. Yeah. I don't think we had a a true it didn't walk it off because it sent it to OT but we had one I I was there when Colorado made one with like 1.7 left or something but that was the first one where the ball is in the air at the buzzer. Very exciting. Yeah, college teams like to shoot with a little bit of time left either get the rebound or I don't know. The pros they're you know if they got a tie game the pros are just going with they want they want the curry shot to hit the buzzer while it's in the air mm. they hit more goes shots in or in the yeah, yeah. They're, they're more likely to hit the shot not clank it off and some wild scramble and yeah some uh some uh walk on who you know they brought in to keep the gpa high uh you know is standing there under the hoop going wait what and he puts it in terrific uh terrific game who else you got who else do we have as a it impressed you this weekend um we talked. I, let me say this: We talked last week about some coaches that needed victory, like needed a big weekend. Uh, three of them advanced: uh, Matt Painter, um, Purdue, Purdue, Tennessee, and 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 uh, Duke. So they're all doing mm, pretty yeah. well. Um, yep. I thought it was impress, particularly impressive for, or maybe therapeutic for Purdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they look really good, and they they played really well. And they need the boilers. I've never seen a one seed celebrate a six to victory over 16 <laughs> quite like Purdue did. Yeah, uh, I was there for the in Indy for the Purdue games. And I think the first one was cathartic. And the second one was like, all right, look out, we're coming. You know, like mm. they got that Godzilla off their back, you know, destroyed grambling. That that was what it was. But then Utah State is a pretty good team. They won 27 games. And Purdue just absolutely destroyed them. And Zach Eady bends the game in a way nobody else does in college basketball because he's so giant. And Purdue just uses every inch of him and that and that advantage. You know, it's painters a little bit like Bill Self, where if I have a dominant big guy, guess what? We're throwing it in every possession. And you're gonna have to deal with it. And eventually they'll run into some teams that might be able to deal with it. But until then. Everything goes through Edie, and he's going to play physical, and people are going to fly off of him, and they're going to the foul. The fouls are unbelievable. Like every time Purdue plays, their foul advantage is massive, and it's driving people crazy. And that's going to be a real talking point, I think, in the Sweet Sixteen. 
is Purdue shoots, you know, 9 million more free throws than their opponents. And it's because of Zach Eady, because he just dominates inside and teams just, they, they foul him or they bounce off of him. Those are your two choices, basically. So it's kind of fascinating to see. It's a very old school approach. Purdue dictates the terms of every game that they play as long as he's in there. A lot of, uh, we're talking about uh, Purdue, you know, blowouts. A, lo- a lot of blowouts from the ones and tunes. A lot of chalk. We talked about it earlier. Like uh, one double digit seed made it into the this, the uh, second weekend, NC State, 11 seed. And then you have Clemson as a six. But outside of that, right, we all have all one, two, three, four, and fives. Uh, yeah. So as wild as the college basketball season was, Right, we and we talked about it a lot. Pat's talked about how crazy and unpredictable it is. This is the I think I saw this as the maybe the second most chalkiest you know in the last decade or so as far as the average seeds uh, making it to the second weekend. I think it's three point three. Um, in the average over the last whatever ten or fifteen years is more like four point three. Uh, so it's uh, chalky in here, Dan. Very chalky. I think it's, I think the only difference, and I don't have a stats on this, but like it's, it's chalky, but they're different teams that are the favorites mm. than traditionally. Yeah. Like Kansas yeah. isn't in it, Kentucky isn't in it, Michigan Kansas, State isn't in it, Indiana is not in it, UCLA is not in it, Louisville's not in it. You know, a lot of teams that uh, traditionally have been uh, utter powerhouses aren't in it uh, or didn't make it. Um, but yes, it's, I thought the, the committee did a good job with the seating. Uh, the sh- you know they did other things wrong, namely should have let more big big East teams big in. East right. Um, I think that's that's a fair criticism of them. Uh, the Big East looked really good. I you know you you were watching this thing and then you're kind of looking at the UConn score, which like they seem to start every game ten zip, seven yeah. zip. Um, and you're like, are we just are we just me- messing around? Like some of those college football seasons when Alabama was just like, we're just playing for second here. What are we doing? Like, is anybody? <laughs> Yeah. The gymnasts talk about that when Simone Biles is in a meet. They're all silver as gold. They just <laughs> they just go, eh, you know, um, beat all the other people. You feel good. Um, you know, so I think that'll be interesting. Uh, can't not mention Oakland U. We'll get to the Kentucky mm. side later. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Golke uh, and his 10 three-pointers and then <laughs> embracing his – the jokes that he's basically a, a regional manager for Enterprise Rent a Car or a shirt. <laughs> the D two transfer with and uh, Oakland was great. That was probably uh, one, maybe the most exciting of the first four days. Like it's prime time CBS. I think it was the highest rated game of the uh, mm. of the weekend. Um, Trey Townsend is a great player for Oakland, and Greg Campy's a great story. And then Kentucky makes. Um, you know, the perfect March Madness, quote unquote, villain to root against. Um, and, you know, just watching Jack uh, uh, Gelke just uh, cook uh, these Kentucky lottery picks or whatever they got uh, is, is is pretty hysterical. Wait, uh, Oakland was-, was involved in the most watched game of the uh, of the first round. Uh, so, Dan, are you saying that um- People actually like to see mid-major little guys. No, no, it's because uh, there was an SEC team in it, uh, Ross. It was was all the people were watching Kentucky, and then people were like, what is this? We don't care. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's right. It was a tough weekend. Let's just say it was not a good weekend for Mm. the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, who was, Mm. you know, opined a bit about maybe maybe we'd have too many uh, automatic qualifiers who are not among the elite teams. Oakland and Yale did some damage to his league, uh, significant damage. And uh, yeah, the SEC in general, just just a brutal, brutal showing. But yeah, they, 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 the Oakland thing was just fantastic to watch. I mean, you know, and that's the thing about Campy's teams always, Dan, you know this, is they, they're always a really good offensive team. You know, they're skilled and they're going to score and they, can, they don't mind playing fast and they're not afraid when they get into the tournament. But <laughs> the goalkey thing it was like, wait a minute, the guy with the, the receding hairline guy is going to yeah. go like thirty two <laughs> and shoot twenty threes. I was oh, talking yeah. to, I was talking to Shaka Smart, um, you know about. Long story short, but anyway, why shooters shoot so much in warmups when they're already good? And he goes, you know, you, you know, even the good shooters, you're probably going to get four or five three point attempts, unless you're the guy from Oakland who shot twenty. Yeah. 20 attempts from three. Uh, it's just, 
Just classic. Chucker. Yes, absolute chucker, and somehow Kentucky failed to contest him. My wife uh, saw him on the screen. I mean, she doesn't watch a lot of sports, and uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah, the immediate reaction was as you'd expect. He looks like he's thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> he might be. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hillsdale College. Hillsdale College transfer. Um, you know, Oakland's got a robust NIL program. Like, I oh yeah, yeah. You uh-huh. know. Uh, but he signed some deals. He had like a Buffalo Wild Wing deals and something else real quick, which is always great. Like even if it, even if yeah. it was only him and his roommates get free chicken wings the rest of the yeah. year, so that's what? a win. That's a win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I you know the, I don't know what to say about this movement to create a larger field or get. Or, I mean, it's just it's. I don't know how you watch this event and say that it, it needs any fix. Maybe right. some better committee work or something. But, I mean, look what happened. We had this exciting tournament that CBS is putting out. Oh, this rating's the highest in years or whatever. And and maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You know, they can, they can work it. Gambling, I think, is part of it. But highly entertaining four days. All these dramatic stories. All these great stories. And, like, I, I saw this note. Greg Campy between the first the, the victory on Thursday night and the the tip on Saturday or just on Friday basically he did 30 media interviews <laughs> he was calling into oh, every radio station promoting awesome. his school right <laughs> mm. local local yeah. around Michigan and and all over the country and he's he's calling in and he's doing 30 and like it's Oakland University people think it's in California it's not like it's a it's a you know predominantly a commuter school it's a growing school but like this is your chance. Like, hype it up. He said, we sold eight grand in merchandise from people in Louisville. <laughs> you know, the Louisville fans were supposedly buying I, Oakland U merch to like. I can their- 100% believe that. 100%. Yeah. Like, how do you sit there? I don't care how much you care about money. Like, you, you have to be like those dudes from Billions or something or like Wall Street and go. Yeah, I don't know. I think if we could only, I mean, like, can't you just be like, hey, let America have this. This is fun. (laughs) Like, this is part. Can't you see that this is part of it? It's Oakland. It's St. Peter's. It's Abilene Christian. It's whatever the hell it's going to be next year. Everyone loves it. Everybody loved the Oakland story. Except the Kentucky fans. (laughs) But that's the point. (laughs) Yeah. They're paying their coach like three times the entire budget of the program like if you if you're if your head coach is making more money than what the entire program spends you shouldn't lose but you can in basketball it's what makes it so great it's just i i you know i don't know what greg sankey's phrasing quite is i I don't understand it it's not just him it's your mark it's other people they aren't acting totally alone but my god Get your head out of the out of the books. Stop chasing every nickel and every advantage. Just be like, you know what? I get to work in an industry that produces this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I get to be part of this. Yeah, I need to be a steward for this. This is America's tournament. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't even belong to the NCA. It belongs to all of us. I, I I know that's not, you know, somebody owns the damn thing, but it's too great to mess up just so you can get some perceived advantage of one more team in. Maybe we have one more unit. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I again, like how you could watch what we watched and say, now nah, let's change it just defies any sort of logic or enjoyment of the actual event. You know, do do you really just not even enjoy it? And so you just you, look you at have it. Joy in your life? Do you have yeah. any joy in your life? You just sit there and go, I could wait, wait. There's a square spot over there on that baseline. We could sell an ad. Yeah, look like a like a NASCAR out there or something. You I don't know. Re- yeah, reduce it all to an accounting question. Okay, but man, you're missing out. Man, I know. Yeah. I know. You know, Sankey obviously because of his most recent comment or comments has been the focal point but as dan said earlier uh, this is this is something i think all four of the power four commissioners believe right and, and yeah. brett your mark in jim phillips made that pretty clear in a story we published two months ago that they think that it should be reevaluated and expanded to 
in some degree. So they all believe it. And and you you wonder, um, I don't know if it's the social media, like echo Twitter echo chamber, or if the vast majority, you know, of, of fans believe that it should remain as is. But man, the the pushback we've seen on this issue is similar to the pushback we saw on some of the first CFP kind of suggestions from the, especially the power two of whether it's the guarantee buy or the multiple AQs, man, it's just like the, the fans of college athletics have like <laughs> risen up. It feels like, uh, Good. and again, I don't know if that's Twitter echo chamber or not, but it sure is loud the last well, uh, few weeks on all this stuff. Listen to it. Listen to it, college leaders. And if it is all for them, then they all suck because it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea to mess with this tournament. And I will say, they do listen to that sort of thing because one of the anecdotes that Greg Sankey is fond of bringing up as he is touting himself, and rightfully, rightfully touting himself for not not giving up on playing football in 2020. Mm-hmm. But one of the things he said, you go back and they they did a study of like a word cloud thing of when they announced that they are going to, to go forward with the season. And like the biggest words were hope and thank you and optimism and stuff. So if you're studying feedback, study this feedback too and listen to it. Yeah, I, I just think, you you know, I was, uh, I was I went and watched the first round with my dad up in, in Massachusetts and uh, we're at a I'd be shocked to learn we were at the at a, a establishment a yeah mm. we're at an establishment had sandwiches and stuff uh captain oh, sure. flagging down in marshfield mass took care of us the whole place is full and it's it's you know it's the excuse to be able to go and uh and drink during the day and it, and the whole place is whooping and screaming when it gets you know any higher seed uh this is not college basketball mecca these people most of these people probably didn't watch a whole lot of games all year um, you know, we're not in Lexington, we're not in Lawrence we're not in the Triangle. Um, it's a pro sports area, and uh everyone's going crazy for this thing. And it's just that's and then you come my uh, yeah, like you said, you, you, uh your wife's asking about it. A couple of years ago, my wife got totally into the St. Peter store. Like I just you have this magical thing and you're trying to change it. It's like Certain sports have things that make sense that don't, maybe they don't make sense, but this is what they are. It's like, you don't go to horse race and say, instead of a triple crown, let's have a best of seven. Uh, you don't say, like, oh, the Stanley Cup, you know, that trophy's kind of weird. Um, let's replace it with this. It's got more, uh, it's got more diamonds in it or something, right? You know what? No, you drink beer out of the cup. Like, you, Matt, you know, you don't, you don't say, let's have, uh, you know, let's golf. Let's cut down on the ma- the majors or whatever, or let's do a shotgun start and no cuts and fifty four holes. You jerks! Actually, they do do that. And look how nice it's going. <laughs> um, but an aside, um, you have this magical thing, and and like yeah, you'd have like Jim Bayheim or something whine about how he should have gotten in more years. <laughs> let's expand it. You know, whatever. It's Bayheim. Like ah, you guys, like please don't mess with this thing. Because if they expand it, and, and I'll get to this Fran Fraschilla plan, which has zero chance of being done, but um, but it's a great plan. They expand it. They will have more of the play-in rounds will be Oakland U against another, what were they, a 14 seed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and there's one less Oakland U in the, in the it, it play, getting their chance against Kentucky. Mm-hmm. There's right. one less chance. It's actually, there'll be a whole bunch of less chances. So it's they're expanding. It's going, oh, just expanding it. Uh, Indiana State could have got in. Yeah, Indiana State could have got in. They would have played Oakland. And so yeah. only one of them really would have yeah. got in. Right. And that's what they're trying to do. And they're trying to ruin the fabric of this thing. And again, just for once, for once, sit back and go, God, I can't believe I can be one of the stewards of this incredible event. This incredible event purely American event, and I'm not going to mess it up based on whatever the hell your reasoning is, which it just isn't there. Well, I mean, I think the main crux of the reasoning is goes back to conference expansion, you know, and it's, it's you know, you have a 16, 18 team league and you want to fight to try to get 
access for such a big group, more access for such a big group. It's the same reasoning with the CFP situations and the multiple AQs. They should be able to get the same number in. They just took other power. Like they took, they should be able to get the same number in. There's not more power conference teams. There's two more power conference teams now than there were before expansion. They, they, the big, the Big Twelve added four teams. Uh, five, I guess. Five. No, maybe five. Uh, four. Well, five. Counting if you SMU, count SMU went to, If you count, and SMU, they lost there will two. Be so five. The, and and then Washington yeah. State right. and Oregon yeah. State right. are out. Yeah. So you're, yeah. they added three more teams. They just shuffled the deck, and now it's like a three card Monty. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, let's no. have more elevens play elevens. Let's have more fourteens play fourteens. Yeah, that, I, I, that is. I don't know. That they is a do- three card Monty trick. Like, I don't know how and again, you can straight face uh, the other thing. Stuff. Well, the other fundamental flaw with the logic of that is that's a you problem. These conferences made those decisions. The Big Ten decided to go to that size. The SEC decided to go to that size. The Big 12 decided to go to that size. Yep. That's Live right. with it. Yep. Live with it. No one you know, you. don't 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 make that Duquesne's problem and Oakland's problem. And Yale's problem and James Madison's problem. That's your problem that you created. Uh Fran Fraschilla's plan, if you go to 72, is the the 16 teams that would have to play in the uh essentially the first eight. If you go to 72, you have a first eight instead of a first four. So there'd be mm-hmm. 16 teams. Those 16 teams must be at large teams. So you're not taking any conference champions shot away from playing in the real event right um and that that w- should help but again if, if these people want to they're grasping for every little advantage over poor old oakland yeah. <laughs> yeah. are they really going to go for this i think fran for plan if we have to go to 72 they should in, they should do the fran plan fran for yeah. care right but i have no faith in anyone who sits there and goes yeah I don't know about this. Yeah. Wait, and again, like, are up. Oh, eight thousand dollars. People in Louisville are buying Oakland shirts. Eh, we don't want that. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Yes, if if you if you're going to do this, if you're going to screw up what was working so well, then fine. That's a way to do it. But there's still no reason to do this. You don't have to add teams. You don't. Another. There's nothing from a public standpoint that is crying to say. Gosh, we wish we had more teams in this. Nothing. Nope, not really. And you're starting to see the pretty loud backlash. Dan, one really uh, – one thing, football kind of thing, because you mentioned Washington State and Oregon State and the Power Five and all that stuff. And I think it was right after we did our last pod, I was able to report out some new information on Washington State and Oregon State as it relates to the CFP. Um in, in in the new CFP deal, new revenue distribution, but uh, kudos to um, Washington State and Oregon State and the Pac-12. They they uh, at first were going to get uh, around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in annual CFP distribution, which is the smallest amount of any program. They were basically going to get the equivalent of UConn. Those three were independents and were going to get about three hundred fifty thousand. While group of five teams made one point five million. And while, you know, uh, formal, former uh, Pac-12 teams, you know, made uh, 15 plus million. Uh, so it was a pretty big drop off and they weren't happy with it. And they, they went back to the CFP before the deal was signed on Monday and, and, and negotiated an amendment um, uh, giving, uh, giving Oregon State and Washington State 3.6 million each now. So a, <laughs> a huge jump. Um, and an important one to note for the future, uh, uh, those two, those two teams, still only about half of what they got uh, in the Pac-12, um, but certainly more than the 350k, which did seem incredibly low. They also landed; they're they're at 12 million and counting in revenue mm. from this NCAA basketball tour. Actually, it's 18. I thought I saw. 18? Yeah, it's 18, oh, 18. million. I'm yeah, sorry. 18 million and counting, and it's only yeah. going to two of them. Yeah, it's only yeah, going yeah to no, that's, right. that's biggest Arizona fans are in Corvallis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, um, yeah. They've yeah. got they, the, the Pac-12 started six and zero in the tournament. They ended up, yeah. you know, three teams are out, but Arizona's still in and still going. 
It's looking pretty good. They got good a too. lot of a lot of money to coming to them. Those two schools, right? They got the Rose Bowl contract, and they got all this NCAA tournament yep. money, and it's um, yeah, it's it, there's a there's a lot of money to uh, to do some interesting things there. Um, yep. Yeah, they're like know, the, the 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 they're like the divorcee, right? The guys <laughs> are going for the trophy wife over in mm-hmm. the Big Ten. And they're and they're making them pay. You are paying. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you are paying. We're gonna. They got a good a divorce attorney, and they are just yeah. sticking it to them. Um. All right, we'll be go to break, and we'll be right back, and I'm gonna discuss real money making because I was I, I watching the NCAA basketball tournament. I wound up on Yahoo Finance trying to research stuff. We got stock tips coming from the Sweet 16, or the uh, round of 32 at least. Be back after this. All right, before we get to uh, Kentucky and Michigan and Louisville and Dusty May and all the different uh, sub coaching, the Alabama Grand Canyon game was absolutely bonkers. <laughs> uh, Charles Barkley after was hysterical. He said it was the worst game he's ever seen. It's just one of, Grand Canyon played no off, they had no offense. They're just jacking up threes and stuff like that. Uh, a million, million foul. I, I don't know what happened. Its game was, it, it looked like a, uh, like a wa- trying to watch a washing machine. It's just. <laughs> Nothing made sense. Whatever. Alabama won. Mark Sears is absolute awesome. Mark <laughs> Sears it ranks only Jamal Shedd can I like more than Mark Sears. Mark was Mark was the only guy really playing basketball. I don't know what everyone else was doing, but there was a basketball game. But I didn't know anything about this Grand Canyon University. I don't even know that much about the Grand Canyon itself. It's pretty anyone big out here, Grand, Dan. It's pretty big. The Grand Canyon. Anyone? No. Mm-mm. Yeah, when I was like seven or something. Did it suck? I think it probably sucks. <laughs> no, you know what I mean it's it's a large hole in the ground, but it's it's kind of an interesting large hole in the ground. All right. I feel like you got to drive a long way to get there, so then everyone says it's good. <laughs> well, there's like, probably some of that. It's I mean, like the, it's out there. It's not by Flagstaff, you know. It's not next to Phoenix, so getting there yeah. is a little bit of a chore. I like yeah, yeah it's, it's, like guy guys like I took vacation. I went to hike. Mount Kilimanjaro and or something like that. Like I spent twenty five grand this whole trip. And he, he, he's basically and you go, how is it? He's got to say, unbelievable, man, unbelievable. Like uh, he can't be like it sucked. It was just a hill. Like eh, you got to be like I watched the sunrise over Africa, changed my life perspective. It reset my. Pro-. You got to, you got to, right? You can't just be like, yeah, I did this whole Kilimanjaro thing. Should have just gone to Punta Cana and the all all inclusive. Is right. Grand Canyon that close to Grand Canyon University? No. No. I don't think so, right? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I don't know. No. Maybe the Grand Canyon is pretty awesome. Colin, our producer here, is saying it's great. I only He's see got a nice fly, picture of it. I fly into there. Vegas, and then you, you know you're close. That's really it. But anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Grand Canyon U, though, okay? And, and I say this all respect to all institutes of higher learning. I don't care where you get. I don't. I'm not. I'm not snobbing it up. I don't even care if you go to college. You do great at any of. But Grand Canyon has like twenty three thousand students, and then this online school it has a hundred and fifth hundred and eighteen thousand students. That's a big school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. It has a thing called Grand Canyon Education. Tr- which trades under L-O-P-E. It is a publicly traded company. L-O-P-E the, for the antelopes, the lopes. Yes. And you can buy stock in Grand Canyon Education, which is affiliated with Grand Canyon University. How affiliated? Well, let's say how confusing all this is. There's an We've had every violation and scandal in college athletics. We now have an FTC yeah. complaint against the school. Okay. They're like under <laughs> investigation, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, okay. There's a new one. <laughs> the FTC. All right. Um, I don't know. We'll let the we'll let the, the the process play out. I don't know whether Grand Canyon's innocent, guilty, the greatest place, the worst place. I don't really care. But you could buy stock in a team. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, I was like, wait, what? You have 118,000 students and you can buy stock? The stock's up 25% in a year. Hey. Now it, it was booming. This thing is, they're adding like 15,000 more students every year. I, I'm so last night I'm watching college basketball and I'm like, 
you know, I'm like ready to put down, a, you know, throw some money in on uh, on LOP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First time I've ever thought about stock trading during a game. Uh, well, st- <laughs> early trading, it's down. So I was like, if they make the Sweet 16, this thing's going to jump, right? <laughs> but they're, they're down. They're down 85 down cents. To, that's because oh, they man. lost. That's because they, they lost. lost. Yeah. So we're going to find the, out what this game meant. Uh, they lost the worst tournament game I've ever seen, too. I'm with Charles <laughs> Barkley. That was horrible. I mean, that was... That was the second round at Peach Jam where the winner advances to play Mean Streets and the loser goes to the consolation bracket to play team final. Like, it was a mess. It was a mess. But just pure chaos, which is kind of how Alabama likes to play. And boy, did Grand Canyon say, buddy, let's go. Got here. 47 fouls in the game. Mm. Uh, 51 three-pointers were taken. 10 were made. That's not good. I'm shocked. There there were only 28 turnovers. It seemed like it was like 48. But, I mean, it was just everybody flying around at full speed, running no offense whatsoever. They played hard. They tried hard. There was no lack of effort, but there was a complete lack of execution or plan. That's for sure. Mark Sears was awesome. 26 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals. He got Alabama through to the Sweet 16. But, my God, please don't, don't ever make me watch a game like that again. Speaking of pure pure chaos, did you guys see the the clips they'd show back of the Grand Canyon students at their <laughs> at their gym? I mean, I wanted to be there. That sounded oh, like yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, looks their like, looks pretty court awesome. Is they they are famous for their home court advantage, yeah. their their atmosphere, and that the havocs that, that was cool. They call themselves yes. the havocs. The havocs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. people were so there was some woman at least. I think it was a woman. We don't know. But somebody with a high pitched voice was screaming, <laughs> yeah. it, and, and it was getting picked up by the mic. It sounded like yeah. she was watching like a child about to get hit by a car. Like every like, <laughs> like ah, <laughs> yeah, like whoa, like and so then people online. I this Grand Canyon thing. I was down Grand Canyon rabbit holes. I was down the Grand Canyon hole. They're like these are paid actors. They're paid actors. Grand Canyon is trying to pump the stock price and, mm-hmm. and making it look like the fans were the wildest fans I've ever seen in an NCAA basketball yeah. tournament game. Yeah. Like yeah. they are going crazy when they cut to them and you're like, dude, it's eight to six. <laughs> like, okay, good play. Good play. But they're it's screaming. Grand Canyon. They've never been in a second round game before. Yeah, we've seen lots of teams not be in this. The Oakland fans weren't scream. They were fun. They were cheering, but they were like, they had a little bit of chill to them. Like, okay, it's early. All right, good, good, good job. wasn't like someone would miss a shot. There'd be a loose ball and, and there's somebody <laughs> screaming like, like this is a life and death. Who gets the ball? Like the Grand Canyon fans are incredible. No, they, that, so they, they were saying the they were actors. They were could not be uh, real. Yeah, they're actors. In, fa- <laughs> in fact, uh, I mean, I can't confirm or deny that, but uh, the school flew 200 of their students to the game all the way to Spokane, uh, flew them in on the on the on the school dime to 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 create that atmosphere. But again, you got the stock like it's, it's just a whole how did. They have they're technically a not for profit because you can't be a for profit in. Right. Remember, we were like University of Phoenix should join the Big Ten because they got like a campus everywhere. <laughs> right. Every market. And they got that great facility in Glendale. They get the University of Phoenix Stadium. That's nice. You ought to, like, you know, they got like one million students. Um, what is with Phoenix and these schools? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, they were just the students. They were not paid actors as far as we know. What a job. Well, I, what are you doing I, for work I, this in, weekend? I'm going to cheer for this uh, team. I don't know. I just got to paint my face purple and scream. <laughs> <laughs> when it, it reminded me of their, their, their eruptions and stuff reminded me of uh, what you see from soccer fans in the stands when somebody stores a goal, like European yeah. soccer. That's what it looked like. They were yes. just going berserk. But yeah. there's not 40 goals in a game. No, yeah, right. Like, no. <laughs> you should score about forty times in a game, either a free throw or a basket. They, they, yeah, there was none of that. Every rebound, I mean, Grand Canyon, they showed up. Let me check the stock again. I'm gonna check it at the end. It's early. It's only yeah. not even ten o'clock. Uh, let's see where we're at. Yeah, still down. No update yet. So, no, the, the, they've depressed the market because of the loss. Sell, sell, sell. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, all right. Coaching news. Uh, the big coaching news uh, is twofold. Let's start with Kentucky. Pat, what do they do? John Calipari big- is not going very well. <laughs> the big coaching news is that John Calipari is still the coach uh, to the utter dismay of many of their fans. You know, I, that, I kind of think they've been at a breaking point for a while now, and this this is just more more breaking. But again, what are they going to do about it? The general reaction seems to be <clears throat> Kentucky doesn't have a sugar daddy who's going to come up with $33 million and the school isn't going to come up with $33 million and John Calipari's still going to coach because he's not walking away without $33 million. So a postseason that ended with a, fir- a knockout in the first game of the SEC tournament and a knockout in the first se- game of the NCAA tournament that follows going one and two last year, lost the first SEC game, lost in the second round of the NCAAs. 2022, won one game in the SEC tournament, but knocked out by St. Peter's in the first round. 2021, they didn't go anywhere. They lost in the first round, and then they were 9-16. and Since the pandemic, John Calipari's record is terrible by Kentucky standards. Absolutely terrible. He has won two postseason games, one in the SEC tournament, one in the NCAAs. They've lost to a 14 seed. They've lost to a 15 seed. And guess what? They're probably still going to have the most players drafted by the NBA in June. And that's where the disconnect is just so glaring and so galling for the fans. It's like, we've got the best talent. Why do we stink in every March? And you know that the the easy analogy is Texas A and M and Jimbo Fisher, which did swallow the pill and pay pay the money, but Calipari's done better than Jimbo ever did at A and M. But it's also Kentucky basketball, which has always done better than Texas A and M football. Kentucky basketball, this this should not happen. This is Tubby Smith was. Not fired, but he was pushed out. Like, find something else to do after the diminishing returns from his national title in 1998 to 2007. This is the same thing from 2015 when Kentucky was 38-0 and lost in the Final Four till now. It's diminishing returns. Nobody's happy. Everybody's tired of Cal's act, but they don't know what to do about it. Well, it it reminds me of... uh, um, well, at least part of it reminds me of Nick Saban, Alabama football, right? They got the best talent, but they, they usually did something with it, right? They usually they, – yeah. they didn't really have a drop-off. I mean, Nick Saban's teams up to the very end really didn't have a drop-off, and they were consistently every year the most talented roster in football, and, and they uh, they made do with that, with that talent. Uh, and I think that's the biggest issue right now with Kentucky is you have, uh, as Pat said, you've, you've got the best talent in your – you're not, you're not making do with it. Um, it's it's crazy how many losses that Kentucky's had in the last four years. Uh, I think it's forty six, which doesn't yeah. even that that seems insane. But forty six over the uh, over the last four years um, is pretty. The, der- the pretty derisive wild. nickname the Kentucky fans gave Tubby Smith was ten loss Tubby. Mm. Guess what? How many mm. losses Cal's had in the last four years? He's had yeah forty. Yeah, 20, 46, 46 yeah. I think. He's, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. He's averaging eleven 12 a, a half year or so, eleven a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the problem. You, when you bring in talent, <laughs> got to win with it. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's one thing to lose to like Trevor Lawrence, Clemson, or Joe Burrow, LSU. Uh, yeah. Not um, Jack Golkey. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Pat, okay. So this lifetime deal was a terrible idea disaster okay Mitch not if it is it really always is 30 million buyout yeah does it ever go no, down it's bigger. perpetual yeah it gets bigger oh, yes, right? no, it, oh. it will keep going down it'll oh, keep going okay. down but i mean it okay. was up over 50 what, like as he gets older yeah. yeah it's older it, it goes down uh-huh yeah lifetime believe... appointees are not a good idea supreme no. court on down like let's let's uh <laughs> like you need a retirement age here i don't yeah um uh, yeah, I mean, Cal can just sit there and keep coaching until they fire. Like, what? what I, I, I'm sure yeah. he is not. He's not having a great time. He's not, you know, it's miserable. Nobody wants to be a lo- losing games and have people ripping on you. Um, and, you know, there's like some guys like 
selling shots to try to raise money um, <laughs> for the, the buyout. I mean, now uh, they drink a lot down there. I mean, we're not, but yeah. seems like a, seems like a long way to go. Seems, <laughs> if sure they, gonna make if it. they could skim off enough of the Kentucky Derby handle at Churchill Downs and just yeah, I don't, use that to get him out, that might be the way to do it. 33 million, but it's hard to just sit there and be like, well, I'm not having a lot of fun. I'm going to walk away from 33 million. Um, you know, doesn't seem like a thing. Pat, um, I mean, you know that place better than than most. Like um, Mitch Barnhart, the AD, is I think the chair of the SEC ADs. I mean, he's the longest tenured AD, I think, in the league. He's probably the most respected. Uh, I'm guessing at Kentucky, he, in this situation, he's got a good a good amount of authority to make the decision. I think so. And yeah. again, I like I the these these signs, the indications are that the university is like we're not we're not coming up with thirty three million to, to lifetime to deal is a to, bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Mitch Barnhart should be catching a lot of hell for that. That's I mean, the biggest problem here. What you don't get those contracts? We don't want him to go to Texas. You're to Kentucky. Let him go to Texas if he wants to go to Texas. Or That's he wants right. To go yeah, wherever. You can get a You'll get I another think. guy. Yeah. Exactly. All exactly. your guys win. Like, Think who you are. Don't panic because, oh, my gosh, my coach who's good may leave. That, that, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not not lifetime deals. Don't do not do them. But they, they did them. Um, all right. Uh, meanwhile, down the road there, Louisville was targeting Dusty May of FAU. He ends up going to Michigan. I think John Beeline might have talked him into it. Ward Manuel goes down there and gets uh, and John Beeline. They get uh, they get it uh, get it done. And Dusty May is a Wolverine, and Louisville is looking for its next option. Uh, how upset were people in Louisville, and where do they turn? And can we get Will Wade back in the uh, back in the <laughs> and can, can I have that moment? That's what can Dan really wants to know. <laughs> can yeah, yeah. Dan's can we get man back? Come on, you you cannot have that moment at Louisville. That's not happening. It Will won't Wade happen. Will not- we, he will not be the next uh, coach at Louisville, unless unless there is a complete overthrow of the university sometime in the next say twelve hours, which I don't anticipate. <laughs> Twenty four hours. Um. So yeah, no people were freaking out big time Saturday night. Uh, big time freak out. There was, you know, a lot of indications Louisville thought they were right in there with him, thought it was probably going to happen, and then things were kind of slowing down. So it's like okay. Okay, something's not quite right here. And what was not quite right was that Michigan was moving in. And Dusty had a decision to make, and he made it. And, you know, I I think Dusty's a great coach, and I think he, he would do well in either place. I think it's a great hire for Michigan. Is this a, an indication that he would rather be at a place where he's not wearing the spotlight all the time? Maybe, because at Louisville, it doesn't matter how good you are in football, basketball. If you're good, is always going to be bigger. At Michigan, obviously, that's not the case. You know, football monolith, and they're they would like to be good in basketball, but but you don't have to carry that weight, so to speak, the way you do at Louisville. So yeah, no Louisville's thing. Look, they kicked the tires on Scott Drew just because you know there was an indication maybe you could take a run at him. He didn't take it. I, I, I'm not. He wasn't even offered, but they they kicked the tires on him. And then it, they were all in on Dusty, and they thought they were going to get him. And somebody, somebody even okayed a setup up for a press conference at the Yum Center, their arena, and set up like forty <laughs> chairs and everything Friday. Yeah, That's great. That's yeah, great. that was a that was a a premature move, clearly. Um, but uh, uh, they they are moving back to not square one, so to speak, but back to the list. And you know, I think this is now a. We'll see. By the time this comes out, they might have a coach. But Shaheen Holloway, uh, Josh Schertz, my guy from Indiana State, who I love, and I think he would be a very good hire. Pat Kelsey may be the third in line there. And the Louisville fans will hate all of them because they got their hearts set on we're getting a big timer. You know, we're getting Billy Donovan. We're getting Scott Drew. It's unrealistic. Mm. Doesn't mean you're not going to get a good coach, but they want to win the press conference and the games. They might just have to win the games and not win the press conference. Yeah, who cares about the the, uh, the press conference? It's 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 meaningless. Uh, you don't know. We it's, we always say we have no idea how these guys will do when they get their next job. It's it's a it's a crap shot. Um, but anyway, big big get for for Michigan. Um, so 
uh, we will see. And I, I think it's probably a little something to it. Michigan's a a very like it's a good job. You can win. Sure. Elon took them to two national title games. Yep. But never had everybody screaming at you. Because yeah. it's not no. just at Michigan. It's like it's a pro sport state too. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's just a lot of you know. There's just I mean, yeah, beat Izzo, maybe split with Izzo, make a couple runs. Everyone's gonna be happy uh, on all that. All right, we've said plenty of mean, snarky, outright grumpy things today, but it's time to find our happy place and say something nice, courtesy of our friends at Prime Video. Ross, Pat, it's time to be nice. Tell me something positive about March Madness over the weekend. What you got? Pat, you're uh, a beacon of yep. happiness. <laughs> I am at all times, right? Um, so, I, you know, we talked enough about Oakland, so I, I don't have to continue to sing their sonnet. But I'm going to talk about the literal largest man left in the tournament, the elephant in ballerina slippers, who is DJ Burns for North Carolina State who is comically listed at 6'9", 275, is probably 6'9", 325. I mean, there is no way in hell that dude doesn't weigh 300 plus. And <laughs> he's got NC State on this crazy, crazy run. They have won seven straight must-win games. And you can go back and compare. All right, they won five in five days in the ACC tournament to get into the NCAAs. Compare that to... UConn with Kemba in 2011. After the first couple in the Big East tournament, UConn was in the field. NC State has literally had to win every single game to keep going. And they keep doing it. And in the tournament, they get in. You know, they beat North Carolina to get the automatic bid. They're an 11 seed. Clearly, we're not getting in without winning that game. Texas Tech, my man DJ, 7-11, 16 points. And then against poor Oakland, poor Oakland had nothing, no idea what to do with Big DJ. 24 points, 11 rebounds, four assists. He's got great touch. He's got a, a good sense of humor. Uh, he's got a quote, you know, said a couple of months ago, but it was fantastic. Said, you know, I, I studied Akeem Olajuwon, but I ended up with Zach Randolph's body. And that's what he looks like. I mean, just a giant round man out there who can really play basketball and he played 42 minutes against Oakland that is a lot for a guy his size so enjoy the uh enjoy the hot tub the cold tub this week and we'll see him in the sweet 16 uh I'm gonna say something nice about uh Tennessee coach Rick Barnes who uh who gets blasted around every corner it seems for his his record in uh in March um whether it's late late regular season conference tournament, NCAA tournament, uh, he gets uh, going back to his days at Texas around halfway through his tenure at Texas. Um, he's not been great, uh, right, over those stretches. The NCAA tournament over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, around twelve, the last 12 tournaments that he's coached in at Tennessee in Texas, he's only gotten uh, past the, the Sweet 16 or he's only gotten to the Sweet 16 twice, uh, you know. So he's only gotten past the first weekend twice, and so this is the third time they're here, uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, and he knocks off his old team Texas to do it to get in there. Um, but obviously, the real test comes this next weekend for for him to see if he can really throw the gorilla off the back. But at least, uh, at least he's he's gotten to the second weekend. So that's my say something nice for uh, Rick Barnes. That's nice. Good that's good nice. for Rick. Been around a long time and uh, a good guy for the media to deal with, that's for sure. Awesome dude and uh very funny guy. Like truly mm-hmm. funny, not just coach funny. Right. Yes. Like, really funny. Yeah, like really funny. And I uh, I saw a great uh, something on Texas like we need to hire Texas needs to hire guys that can win in the tournament and they had picture of uh Rick Barnes and Shaka Smart as the uh, top candidates. <laughs> and so <laughs> those guys can't win there but can win some other places. Um, all right. I'm going to say something nice about who I think's the biggest guy in the tournament is Zach Eady. Um, this <laughs> I guy, guarantee DJ weighs more, but he doesn't. All right, stand DJ. Well, Zach is big, and he just gets beaten on. I just like watching him play. It's 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 a throwback game. Uh, there's nothing special. He's just just 
oak tree in the middle. I like his demeanor. Uh, I feel like everybody just rips him. He gets yelled at by the fans. He gets heckled by opposing fans. He's this stoic, kind of stoic Canadian. Um, it just gets it done. I just love watching Zach Eady play. And I feel like this Purdue team just has just so much pressure on them. And uh, and that means the pressure's on Zach Eady to make something happen here. He's had really one of the one of the I mean, he's gonna be a two time player of the year. And as much as I love Jamal Shedd, uh, Zach Eady's the player of the year. Um and so that's a legendary career, but it's got to get done right now. And he was all business this weekend. So I really, I really like uh, that whole Purdue program, uh, what they, what they're about and the way they carry themselves, Matt Painter on down. And uh, Edie, I think takes an unnecessary amount of abuse just because he's the big guy. And I, I get it. It's fun to yell at the the guys. I, I don't, not big on, you know, but it's, he's, a, he's a, still a college player, but uh, uh, good on Zach Edie. I'm not rooting for any particular team in this tournament, but I'm rooting for him. Uh, and I think he's carried himself uh, exceptionally well thus far, and we'll see what we have it. So there you yeah. have it. We, uh, go ahead. So he, he's a really impressive guy. He really is. You talk. He's thoughtful. He handles the spotlight and the pressure that's on him really well. As the whole Purdue program, they're incredible. Given the flameouts they've had, they're still so open and accessible. Uh, I can't say enough really about how they they carry the whole program. But Edie is the centerpiece. And and look at this program is the elite program in that area. Yeah, it, it hasn't broken through for Nashville, but this is like forever. Purdue sat behind Indiana and Kentucky and Louisville, and you know even at times you know Notre Dame or Butler, whatever. Like they just built this program up and up and up and up, and uh, here they are now where they're like getting the the favorites pressure. So there you have it. We proved that uh, three grumps like us can actually say something positive for once. Thank you to Prime Video. Find your happy place and take the stress out of streaming with Prime Video. All right, let's. Uh, you got it, guys. Got anything else you want to close? I got one story how, to close. With. How are your brackets doing? How are no the brackets idea. doing? <laughs> Come on, Dan. Everyone. You said you picked basically all chalk. You should be doing really well. I, yeah, I probably did. Yeah, well, I didn't pick one. I only had three Final Fours. That's it. How's your How's your brackets, man? <laughs> brackets are busted, man. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Yours busted. My got- mine are busted. Yeah. No, I probably am doing all right. I don't know. I did. I t- picked all chalk in the in the women's. We had we picked the women's bracket, and the first round I picked all the favorites except I picked Michigan State to beat North Carolina nine eight in the women. That was my one upset because mm. I know one of the players on the Michigan State team, so I was a little loyalty. And uh, that was the they lost. So I <laughs> that's that what I got for not picking. And then Middle Tennessee won, but then they lost. So. Um. Yeah, my yeah, bracket's know. terrible. Probably it's terrible. terrible. I don't even. We look. got. We've got a kind of an extended family pool that I'm in, and there's 17 of us, and I'm tied for 12th. And actually, only 16. One of them never filled out the picks. So I'm I'm in the bottom quartile for sure. Yeah. The Yahoo picks. I, I the latest. Uh, yeah. How well, after doing? the Where first the- two days, yeah, I was like third, I think, in our Yahoo. There was like twenty of us, maybe uh, that's expert why picks. That's why. You yeah, maybe so. Well, that was after I the was- first two days. I think I've, I think I've slipped a little bit, but three of my four final four teams are still alive, and uh, all in five of my, uh, or eight, yeah, five of my elite eight teams are are still alive. So we're we're trucking. We could pick up some points here. I just looked, actually. My daughter, who is in Peru, who pays attention to none of this, is in the 99.7th percentile of ESPN's pool. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. What a fluke. All right. She's like, she's like, what is, like, where is she often, like, the real countryside, too? Like, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, like, in the mountains, isn't she? Yes, she's at 9,300 ele- feet elevation yep. in Peru, 9, like farming nice. potatoes, you know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's close up with this. Uh, WXY, no, XIX, WXIX News out of Ohio. Um, I don't know. You can We can do people's court this. Is this father a hero, father of the year, or not father of the year, or worst mm. father of the year? Um. Uh, 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 Adam Sizemore, Adam Sizemore in Oxford, Ohio, is accused of repeating his child's school uh, to complain about 
the amount of homework. Kept calling the school. Uh, a father's growing frustration about the amount of homework his child's school was assigning has led him to be arrested. <laughs> uh, he repeatedly called the school and called the principal and threatened the principal, saying, uh, essentially, if there's not less homework, quote, uh, the principal, quote, better put his big boy pants on, <laughs> end quote. <laughs> I wish my dad did this when I was in elementary yeah, high school. See, that's yeah. like, then, if that wasn't enough, because the principal was non, non-moved by this <laughs> too much homework complaint, Adam Sizemore started calling the cops to complain about too much homework being assigned at the at this school like it might be a I guess a criminal statute I I, I don't know he called dispatch 18 times roughly said oh, the Jesus. Oxford police detective Adam Price in the audio records from the police department uh Sizemore can be heard f- becoming frustrated that dispatchers are not telling him their name he was audibly frustrated uh he kept getting the police chief's voicemail and that uh, the chief would not call him back. Uh, and then this was a bad line. He can come to my expletive house. I pay for him. He can come to my house. According to one of the transcripts, um, after repeated calls, Sizemore did not get a chance to talk to the police chief, but he did get to speak with officers. He did. <laughs> uh, they did come <laughs> to his house, I bet. <laughs> I right. bet they did. Nice. So um, too much homework. I mean, it's March. The kids are trying to watch the games. I don't yeah. know. Is yeah. is this guy standing up for his kids saying we don't need this much homework here, Oxford Public Schools, or uh not so good where you know education is a light set the set the stage for a lifetime of learning and let the teachers teach and uh do not tell the principal to put his big boy pants on and do not <laughs> tell the cops I dare you to come to my house essentially. Pat 40. Uh- I, I'm always on the side of less homework, so I I, I applaud the sentiment. Perhaps not the as execution, um, you know, <laughs> eighteen calls or whatever it was to the police dispatch might uh, that you might be pushing it a little far at that point. <laughs> what you need to do, Dan Wetzel, what you need <clears throat> buy a big ass dog and feed the homework to the dog. My dog there ate my go. homework. Just say that every day. You get too much. Feed the dog the homework. Move it's on. It's online now, man. They do it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, all right. Feed the dog the hard drive of your computer. <laughs> Whatever. Justice uh, uh, Dellinger. Dad, dad of the year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wish, I wish my dad did that. I don't know about the calling the cops though. That's yeah. kind of a little, a little far. But hounding the school principal and telling him he must, he better put the big boy pants on. <laughs> that would have been great to have happen. Uh, of course, if your dad does do that or your your parent does do that, then uh, it, it it might not help you with your relationship with your teachers and principal at the school, probably. But, you know. It feels like a short-term solution. Like, it's like yeah. when someone runs for student <laughs> council and says, we're going to – my platform – as junior junior class president is no more homework or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not not really going to work. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm I want to hear these nine one one calls. You know, nine one one. We have emergency. an emergency. <laughs> My kid has been assigned geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine the operator? You again, like, wait, sir? What? On like yeah, the fifteenth right. time, you again, yeah. <laughs> Adam? Adam? I saw. They want me to read the whole book. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, but the that's not yes. an emergency. See, see number. the number. Yes, Mr. Sizemore, go ahead. Uh, anyway, that's. I mean, what a. No one's going to believe this. This paperwork in the county jail. What are you in for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My kid was getting too much homework. He wanted to watch March Madness. I see. Right. He should have waited. I don't believe this is March Madness related. But if he had, it would have helped his case. I would have been sure. like, okay, yeah. Yeah, right. Every, you got to skip school. You got to yes. not listen. You know, you got to watch the cool that. teachers. The yeah. cool teachers put on the games in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll be back later this week with uh, more college sports news and notes. Uh, continue to subscribe to our podcast. We appreciate you listening and we will uh, talk to you later.